Now, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is going to be, what kind of gecko is my crested gecko? With the large scale of variety when it comes to crested gecko mutations, it is a completely justifiable question asking, well, which morph is mine? I wanted to take today and talk about the five most common crested gecko mutations that you can usually find in any of your common pet stores, anything like that, and the ones that most people have in their home. So stick around while we talk about some gecko mutations, how you can identify what your gecko is. Let's get into it. So kicking things off, let's head into the first gecko mutation, and that is going to be number one, the buckskin crested gecko. Ah, uh, the buckskin. A gecko that is just, well, it, it, it is what it is. A uh, buckskin is going to be a pretty much patternless gecko, resembling more of a, a beige type color, hence buckskin. You think, oh my God. Buckskin crested gecko is going to be a patternless beige type gecko, much you would think of like when you're thinking of a deer, that kind of buck deer. At least I think that's why they call it that. A lot of people like to refer to as the wild type crested gecko. This is going to be a blank canvas. It does not get more normal than a buckskin. There's not going to be any high colors, high contrast, contrasting colors, Dalmatian spots. No, a buckskin is what it is. It is a beige looking gecko. That's about it. Some of you guys might be asking, Dakota, really, we need to, we need some info on the buckskin, how to identify it. This will come in handy later on down the series when we start talking about more combinations and how to get certain combinations out of these crested geckos. So we need to build our building blocks before we get into the complicated stuff. And having this is a great source to go back to when we do get to those more complicated mutations. That's pretty much gonna wrap up this section. If you got a beigey, naked looking gecko, then for sure you have a buckskin. Moving on, let's get into the next topic, which is gonna bring us to number to the bicolor crested gecko. Unlike your buckskin or patternless crested geckos, the bicolor is going to be a little bit different. That's going to be that it's going to be a patternless gecko. However, it is going to have a different shade of dorsal. Usually the top is either lighter or darker than what you see on the sides. Hence, bicolor. It's a gecko with two different shades of color. I promise you guys, this gets important later on down the series, you just gotta pull through with me. Today, I suppose this does come a little bit useful because some people may confuse their buckskin with a bicolor, so the bicolor, the traditional trademarks for it, is going to have to, that has to have two different colors or two different shades of those colors, whether it being a little darker on the top of the dorsal than the sides, and so on. It's not a complete patternless animal because there are that two shades that play a little bit different of a part for it. All right, now we're gonna get into stuff that has a little bit more complication than just it is a beige gecko or it is a gecko that is beige and then a little darker beige. <laughs> that is going to bring us to the third one at hand, and that is going to be number three, the flame crested gecko. I really like making this one is we're pretty much adding a different thing every time. So the first one, we had the buckskin, which is just a beige patternless animal. Number two is going to be the bicolor, which is going to have those two different shades. And now number three is similar to the bicolor, but it's going to be a little bit different. That's going to be is usually in most cases, you're going to have a black or dark base of the animal. And then the top dorsal is is gonna have a very contrasting color, whether that be a shade from yellow, bright yellow, to dark orange. Not too dark though, unless we get into other traits such as Halloween, but we'll save that for another video. It might be a little confusing to some people just because we're talking about bicolor, which is two different shades, and now we're talking about a flame, which is just two different shades. But remember, in order for a crested gecko to be considered a flame, it's gonna have that contrasting color. So again, more likely than not, it's going to be a darker base with that nice flame, that yellow to orange color then on the door. So you're gonna have little to virtually zero going on in the side dorsals or the limbs of the animal. We're just focusing on the dark coloration of the base lateral dorsal and then going to the top having that different contrasting color. When it comes to the flame crested gecko, you're not really going to see much designer morphs or designer breeders for that specific trait. Unlike stuff like the bicolor or patternless, you're going to get people that are trying to make the reddest crested gecko or the yellowest crested gecko and there are some designer traits that hold up in the market when it comes to the valuation of that trait. However, when it comes to flame, it's really looked at as a low trait, a pet quality trait, if you will. Most of the time, you're going to find flames at your local pet smarts, pet co's that are then gone by large producers like Reptiles by Mac that wholesale these geckos out that aren't really looking for the quality of the animal, but just the quantity and how many they can make. And I'm not trying to put down the flame crested gecko, but when we are talking about the crested gecko market and how the community views these things, most of the time, the flame is not in any way, shape, or form considered a high value animal, or it is at least from what I've seen, I've never seen someone trying to build up the flame crested gecko to a specific thing using phenotypes. So if you got a flame crested gecko, what do you know? Maybe you can be the first guy that makes designer flame morphs. I. I don't recommend it, but it's your life. You can do whatever you want with it. Real quick, boys and girls, before we move on with this video, I just want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor. 
well, that's me and the Patreon channel. Guys, being a social media guy is so hard. Making videos and editing them and having to post them and then getting money from that, that it's so difficult, guys. Trust me, a nine to five, this is so much harder than your regular job. And with me being too privileged and lazy to actually get a real job, I need to count on people giving me money in order to keep doing the fun stuff that I do. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Realsies though, if you guys do want to support your boy, Patreon is a great way to do it. You guys get a bunch of behind the scenes stuff that I don't show off over here. That's going to be first look at the babies hatching, first look at availability. If you guys are looking for something special like some of my gecko mutations, Patreon's a great place to see it. We do some behind the scenes videos every now and then, and it's a really cool close knit community of people that are really interested in supporting us over here at Dakota Blue Exotics. So hey, if you're feeling generous enough to kick your boy a couple bucks, I very much appreciate it. The link will be right down there, there in the screen to learn more. We also do have a one week free trial going on right now. You can check that out down there as well. And if you can't give any money, that's okay. Times are tough right now. A like on this video is also very much appreciated. Enough of that. Let's get back into the video. What do you guys know? In this one, we are going to be building off the one we did prior, just like we've been doing this entire video. And that trait is going to be number four, the Harlequin Crested Gecko. Now the Harlequin Crested Gecko is going to be a little bit similar to Flame, but we're going to add on to that. So while a Flame is that contrasting color, usually that dark base with a bright contrasting color. So let's say this picture right here. What we are going to do is be adding on to that, making it a harlequin, having pattern, and then on the side dorsals and limbs as well. It's going to be the biggest key difference in what defines a flame versus a harlequin. That's going to be that the flame only has that top dorsal and then a dark base, whereas a harlequin is going to have that top dorsal dark base, but also patterning going down the side dorsals and limbs as well. That's pretty much the only key difference between the two. People like to say that the harlequin is the upgrade uh, flame crested gecko and then there's a lot of stuff you can do with a harlequin crested gecko which again we'll go over later on in the series so the flame you're pretty much constricted with just that top dorsal and that base the harlequin you can do a lot because you're having adding on that side dorsal and limb patterning limb patterning as well. And moving on to the last trait at hand, the last base trait that you usually find in these crested geckos. This is going to be my personal favorite out of all the ones. It's the ones that I think there's so much you can do with it. And it's a mutation I've been working with for a little under half a decade. And that is going to be number five, the Dalmatian trait for crested geckos. When it comes to Dalmatian crested geckos, there is so much variation with the trait and so much you can do with it. We're talking about Dalmatians versus super Dalmatians versus confetti lines versus red spot only versus oil spills versus ink spots. The list goes on and on, but for this section, we just want to cover the base morph being Dalmatian. Now the Dalmatian trait for crested geckos is characterized by pea-sized black spots that covers the gecko in some way, shape, or form. Dalmatians can go onto any type of pattern or combination. It does not just have to be a buckskin or a patternless animal that then has dowel spots. You can have dowel spots on anything. Lily whites, harlequins, tricolors, uh, tigers, really anything. As far as the community goes, we really don't, it's kind of shunned upon having dowel spots in those patterns. People think to, that it takes away from the beauty of the pattern itself. So we most likely like to use those with more of the less pattern animals, that being your buckskin, bicolor, patternless. Um, I personally like it on tigers and brindles, but that's just me. That is going to be it. A little bit of a short one, just because it's a little difficult talking about the classifications of these more basic common mutations or traits, if you will. If you guys want a little bit more of a deep dive, I do have a blog that talks about all my crested gecko mutations and we're going to start with these five here. You can check that out at dakotablueexotics.com. We'll have the link right down there in the description. If that wasn't enough crested gecko content from you, this playlist is absolutely awesome. It has about 40 different crested gecko ones or we can check out this video right here that is a cool one, I assume, because I put it right there. As always, boys and girls, if you made it this far, a like and subscribe is very much appreciated. It really helps boost the channel. Thank you guys so much for taking the time of your day to follow us over here at Dakota Blue Exotics. I will see you guys next time, but until then... Goodbye.